Where secrets abound, trust is not an option, neither is failure. Princess Ensula of Caroleo lost everything the day her father and brother were assassinated, and she was sent away to a faraway land for her own safety. From a distance over the next decade, she hears how her mother rules with an iron fist, so now Ensula decides to return, knowing she is stepping into the middle of a battlefield. Adric's world crumbled on the day of the assassinations. He lost friends he considered to be family that day, and the woman that he loved left without saying farewell. He remained loyal to the queen, and at the first opportunity to gain power to prevent such loss from occurring again, Adric seized it, becoming Lord Inquisitor. Upon Ensula's return, Adric will do anything to protect her, but he realizes the one person he will have to protect her from most is himself. As Ensula comes face to face with her past once more, she knows one thing, she can trust no one. The Crown's Secret is the first book in The Hand of Sorrow, a fantasy series imbued with political intrigue, betrayal, and mystery. If you are fond of magic, questioning characters' motives, and a quick-paced story with a hint of romance, you'll want to check out Kelly Blanchard's new series that she co-wrote with Matthew Dale. Crown's Secret. I love having physical copies of books. Okay, that I could show off. It's fun. Also, this chair is rolling around. I guess that's what happens when I have a wheels on my chair. It moves. Um, anyways, so The Crown's Secret is the first book in The Hand of Sorrow, which is kind of a prequel series, sort of, to um, the Chronicles of Lorek, which, uh, well, actually it's set in the same universe. It involves characters of the previous generation, but I don't know if it's officially a prequel series, or if it's just a companion series. The distinction is very slight, but it matters. Anyways, this book follows Ensula. She is coming home for the first time in a decade. And in that time, um, she has learned a lot. And she has also learned that her, her mother um, is ruling the kingdom with far more might than perhaps is necessary. Um, and so Ensla is trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And also, by the way, who assassinated her family? Or more accurately, who was responsible for the assassination of her family? Because again, subtle distinction, but it matters. Um, and Adric is our other primary character. He um, is Lord Inquisitor to the Queen, which means he's kind of the guy who takes care of everything. He is... Um, sort of the leader of her magical forces. He kind of interrogates people and he... <sighs> it's like if you gave a detective military powers, I guess, would be the most accurate way to describe it. <laughs> There's really no good word for it besides Inquisitor. So, yeah, that's, that's what I got. Also, if you hear noises in the background, that would be the, the cat. She's... She's playing with her toy again. Anyways, um, so this book, this book was fun. This book was fascinating to read. Um, I'm always fond of adventure combined with political intrigue, combined with characters who know more than they're telling. <sighs> also, I just, I really like the style of Kelly Blanchard's work and Matthew Dale's work now that I've actually read it. Um, the characters, were tricky, they were kind of doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing, um, but I liked it, and the plot was fueled by their uh, motives and their not quite knowing everything, and it was fun and adventurous, but also a little dark, a little sad at places, and super fascinating. I, I just, I love the twists and the turns in these books. They're so much fun, and they're great. My only real critique is that some of the secondary characters, I want to see a little more of them, but as this is only book one, I'm not too concerned about not seeing more of these characters. Ah, oh, it's gonna be fascinating, book two. Ooh, ooh, the ending. Ah, oh, mmm. <sighs> Anyways, um, I do, I love, as far as characters go, Adric is absolutely my favorite. He's like the big snarly dude who's also a teddy bear, but not really. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, anyways, 
that's pretty much all I've got for you this week. The second book in this series is coming out sometime I want to say in November but it could be the end of October. I don't remember specifically um, but it's coming out soon within like a month or so so definitely definitely check out this book. Ooh, let me get this in frame if I can do that. Um, it's a great book, great start to a series. I absolutely love it. You do not need to read The Chronicles of Lorek to read this book, um, just so you know. They are completely separate. They do have characters that are similar, and if you read both, then you will definitely notice some crossover between characters here and there. But this happens way before Chronicles of Lorek. The storylines are not necessary to be read in order or one after the other or in conjunction or whatever. So if you want to read one and not the other, don't worry about it. Although I do recommend reading both because they're pretty fantastic either way. Um, anyways, I look forward to book two. I'm super excited for that. <sighs> yeah, and even, um, I was gonna say words and I forgot what the words were. So I'll just leave you with links in the description as usual. And ooh, I got author copies. So one, two, three, and four I'm very excited about. I think I showed this off before, my uh, romance novel. <sighs> my brain says I did, but I'm going to show it off anyways. And yeah, um, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. Go cause some trouble, go read a book, and I shall see you next time. Bye.